So today we're going to focus on uh, creating more complicated or more, co more complex um, surface maps. <clears throat> uh, I want to focus on ways that you can take very simple geometry and make it much more complex and look much more realistic um, than what we've done so far. I'm going to go back to an old school way of doing it and then later on this semester we're going to um, do something a little bit more current, more sophisticated yet, but they both work just fine. So what I want to do today is I'm going to start in, in Photoshop and show you it's kind of taking the, the face that I made for um, the reboot character, Mike, and expand on that a little bit to show you what you can do by simply taking um, a few simple images and projecting them onto a surface to create transparent maps, to create bump maps, to create image maps, all sorts of things that just can really enhance simple geometry quite a bit. So let's go ahead and start. Um, so at the moment I'm in Photoshop. So you do need, in order to do this, you do need some sort of um, 2D digital editing program. And Photoshop for me is the go-to program to use. Um, at the moment, I've created a brand new file that if we go to, click in here and I go to image, image size, <clears throat> it, um, let's view it in pixels. There we go. It's a thousand by a thousand pixels. And I'm going to bump up the resolution of this to 300 pixels per inch. 240 would be just fine, but it's going to be, it's a fairly large image. Um, I think the important thing to note is that it is square, that all projection maps, or especially image maps, which is what we will be using, are square. They start by being square. Um, and then <clears throat> as they're projected onto the, in, to the object, then you can change the height and the width of them and you can rotate them and do a variety of things. Um, what I like to do when I get started is to just bring out um, some guidelines. So since this is, wait a minute, I thought I did a thousand by a thousand. So maybe it's not. So let me go back to image size. Let's go back to image size and let's try again. No, I don't want that. I just want, well, I mean, 1250 by 1250 would be fine. But I just want a thousand. That's, that'll be good. I like even numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put guidelines. So I know where the center of everything is. And these won't show up. They're just helpful to me. So similar to what I had, had done before um, with Mike's face, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use shape layers um, to build an image of a window with window panes. And um, we'll do some basic coloring in that. And um, if you wanted to use a, 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 an image, of a photographic image, that would be work just fine, and work just as well. But um, for our purposes today, I think you'll see it'd be, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to start by building the outer edge of the window, kind of a silhouette, as it were. Okay. So I'll start with, um, I'm going to use shape layers in here. So let me go to over here. Let me go back to, I need to change something real quick. Um, I'm going to go back to default, some default settings here. Just so I can find things a little bit easier. Because I have essentials, but I'm going to go ahead and select e reset essentials. And then I'm going to close this. And then I can come over here. And underneath here, yeah, I just want to select a simple rectangle for right now. And I 
I'm going to start with um, kind of a, a tan background image um, because this, is, this will represent the frame of our window. Okay. So if I were to transform that, I want to make sure that it's centered. I want to make sure everything is aligned really nicely. Okay. Now, did I do that right? I don't think I did. So let me do that again. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And I didn't do that right. Oh, it is a shape layer, but I have, um, I'm going to go ahead and instead of a green outline, um, I'm just going to say no outline. And for the fill, I'm going to go ahead and make this kind of a tan. Uh, it's not very tan. How about something a little bit more? I don't know. I'm looking at my screen here and they're not looking that great. Let's go back to dark here and see what we see for colors. I just want to create something that um, sort of a tan color for a window frame. Uh, not pastel. How about light colors? Let's see what we have here. Uh, pale, darker, should have thought of this a little bit more before. I'm not used to the 2020 version of, uh, well, there we go. So, uh, nice brown here. A um, little bit lighter, that'll do just fine. Okay. So there we have um, the outer silhouette of our, of our window. And the next thing that I want to do now is I want to make window panes for that. So I'm going to make sure that the shape layer is selected again. And inside each one of these quadrants, I'm going to go ahead and make, now that's the same color. So I'm going to use kind of a light blue for that. So let's look at, uh, that's a little too much. Uh, how about pastels? That might work for us. That'll work perfectly. So there we go. So now I need to duplicate that. So I have my window panes and then that will automatically make our mullions. And then well, I'm going to save that as an image. I'm going to save it both as a Photoshop file and I'm going to save it um, as a JPEG. And I'm going to try to import JPEGs um, into Lightwave. Um, I know that some of you have had issues with that and I have no explanation. I thought all of that was resolved in uh, 2020 version of this. So as I move this, I'm going to hold down the option key and the shift key. And let's see if I can't make, no, nope, I didn't make a copy. So you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this up and I'm just going to make a copy of it like so. So now I have a copy of it and hold down the shift key to constrain the movement. And I'm going to make a copy of this one again. And I'm going to move this down and I'm going to constrain the movement like so. And I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to constrain the movement. So we have basically our window. Okay. So that a very simple image for a window. Um, just let you know that the window panes will be transparent. They will look like they're made of glass. They will have slight rippling qualities to them. Um, I think what I'm going to do though, let's select these two and I'm going to make the mullions just a little bit smaller. So let's select both of them. And Let's take these now and let's 
just I thought they were a little bit fat. And now I'm going to take these two. Um, let's take that one. Let's select move again. One, two, three, four. And let's take this one. Let's take the next one. I'm just trying to tidy this up a little bit. And then let's take the next one. And one more. Yeah, I just wanted the mullions to be um, a little bit thinner as well. So first step now that I've got my window completed. And again, instead of um, a flat color for the, the wood that were the painted surface back here. Um, you could use an image of wood. You could also use, um, if you wanted the wood to look old and kind of chipped and tattered, you could use a photograph of that in the background. But for demonstration purposes, I don't need to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. I'll do a save as is a Photoshop file. Okay. I'm going to save that on my computer. I'm going to save it in my image folder. So let's go to desktop. And I have, let's close that. And I have content fall 2020. That's what we're using here. And I'm going to save it in my image folder. So I'm going to name this window. Okay. <clears throat> and now, um, I'm also going to save a copy of it um, as a JPEG so that I can bring this into Lightwave. So I'm going to go ahead up here in the file and I'm going to export. Um, I'll just do save as, you know, I'll do export. And I'm going to do save for web legacy just for the heck of it. <clears throat> and instead of ping here, um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is a JPEG. And I want this to be the maximum quality. And this will automatically have the, the correct extension. So it'll be saved in window. And let's see if I already have it in here. I got to make sure that I go to desktop and then I go back into the same folder that I had before. That's kind of important. So content. There we go, 2020, and I'll save it in there. So it should be, there we go. There's window from Photoshop file. There is window JPEG. Now, the reason I'm saving the Photoshop file first is because it has all the layers. And if I need to go back and edit this for any reason, I can and then save the JPEGs back out as flat because JPEGs are all flattened files. Um, anyway. Now what I need to do is I need to create a separate group of images that I'm going to use for my um, layer masks because there are certain times that I want to reveal certain parts of this and that I want to hide other parts. So for example, I'll need an image for the overall shape of the window itself so that if I want to reveal just the window and then maybe put another image in the background, um, if I add later, I will be adding a transparent map for the window panes. So I need a map for just the window panes. I want to reveal just the window frame itself. So I need an image for that. And all of those images that are going to be used um, for layer masks need to be in black and white. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to go to image. And then I'm going to convert this to grayscale. So I'm going to go back up here and I want to duplicate this image. Okay. And I'm going to call it window masks. Just it's a way that I have of making sure that everything is um, safe here. And now I'm going to convert all of this to black and white because I don't need it to be in, um, in color anymore for a mask. So I'm going to go to image mode, 
and I'm going to switch from RGB to um, grayscale. And I don't want to flatten anything. Just going to leave that alone. Discard color. And now I can change the color of all of these. Um, so to do this, I'm going to turn off and do this, try to do this systematically. I just need the silhouette of my, um, my image here. So I'm going to double click in here and I want this to be solid black. Because black and white, white remains and black cuts away, I believe. I, sometimes I have these reversed, but it really doesn't matter. So first thing I should probably do is I should save all of this as a Photoshop file and then save out each of these separate images as a, um, as a JPEG, the ones that I need and the ones that I don't need. So I'm going to go, go ahead and do save as and save on my computer, make sure that it's inside the correct folder and it is in its window masks. So that is my Photoshop file for the window masks. Now I'm going to save this. I'm going to export this one as um, silhouette. Okay, um, you can name it whatever you want, outline or whatever. I'm going to go to file, and I'm going to go to um, export, save for web legacy. I could, this is fine, just as is. And again, I'm going to name it a JPEG file here, and I'll save, and I'll name it. Not, I'll, I'll name it um, Silhouette Mask so that I know it is a mask. Just uh, remind myself. Silhouette Mask, there we go. So it goes in the same location as the rest. Now let's save one for the frame itself. So I need to turn these guys back on. And the reason I'm doing it this way also is to make sure that each of these layers are absolutely in absolute alignment with one another. So I need to turn each of these into white. Okay, so that's going to be white. And I'm going to select this one. And this one is going to be white. And then this one, if you want to have some of it show through or have some of it affected, then it would be need to be some sort of intermediate gray. But I want these to, if you want it to absolutely cut away or to remain, then it's black and white and that's it. So we'll use this one. And again, I'm going to change all of this to white. And then we'll do the same for this one. This white. So this will be the window frame. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead with these layers turned on. I can go ahead and I can export. So I'll go to file and I'm going to export. And I'll just use um, save for web legacy. And I'll, again, I want to use the upper right hand corner. So it's a high quality JPEG. I'll select save, and I need to remember to change this. So not window masks JPEG, but this will be, how about window frame? Window frame mask. Okay. There we go. Now I need to make one for the window panes. So what I'm going to do for each of the panes is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to turn those into black. And then I'll turn off the layer for the background image. So that these need to be absolutely black. I have one more to go. So it gets a, for something complex, it gets a little tedious and actually they can get way more complex than what I'm doing. So I'll turn this off and now I have my window panes. So this will be window panes mask. So I'm going to go to file. 
export. I'm going to use web legacy just for the heck of it. Make sure that, you know, top quality is selected. And I don't want this. I want window panes mask. Okay. So I think I have everything. I have a full color image that I'm going to use to project. I have the silhouette that I'm going to use as a mask. I have the frame that I can use as a mask to reveal just the frame or to affect it. And I have one for the panes. If I wanted anything else, I could, again, I could, you know, make multiples of these. So I'm going to leave that alone now. And now I'm going to switch to lightweight. Um, let's make sure that I am in modeler and I'm not. So I've got to switch to modeler. And I'm going to start with a very simple cube. And that's the whole point of doing this for you, is to show you that I can start with a very simple object and make it fairly complex. So I'll start with a box that's one meter by one meter, and that's it. Let's bring up the numeric requester. And there we have it in the middle. And let's turn that off. So I have that. Okay, so that looks good. So I have my one meter cube and to make sure that it is, I'm going to reset and activate just to make sure that it is a one meter cube. Now I can select fit so we can actually see this. There we go. Okay, so now I want to start with some basic surfaces here. Again, these are just very generic. And then when we get everything set up, we'll um, go over to layout and then I'll make more sophisticated settings for all of these. Okay. So what I want to do now is I'm going to hit, since nothing is selected, everything is selected, I'll hit Q and I'll just name it um, box. And let's, it's going to be wood texture later on. So let's um, give it sort of a brownish color down here. Okay. Doesn't have to be, but again, it's just a starting point. Now on the Z axis here is where I'm going to um, make uh, the surface for the window. And remember, since the box is six sided, I can select one polygon and I can make it a separate surface. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to name this one window. And just to make it different, I'm going to change the color here and make it green so I can see what the heck I'm doing here. Okay. Now it obviously isn't going to look like this when we're done, but this is just to set things up. And I'm going to do one more thing because I said with, with um, layer masks, I'm going to poke holes in the window panes. And to show you that something is actually inside there, I'm going to put in a separate layer here. I'm going to put a sphere. So like a big red ball just for the heck of it. So under create, I'm going to go to ball and I'm going to set up reset and activate. And let's go ahead and shrink it down a little bit. Like so um, that should be big enough to see. And I'm going to hit Q and let's make it a red ball and I'll name it ball. Just so that later on we can actually see something inside here. There we go. So the next step is to save the box that I have. And again, the box is a, you know, it's just a very simple box, but in a moment it will look much, much more complicated than what we have. So I'm going to go to save, save object as. and make sure that it is in the right location. And it's probably not right now because I've been working on other things in Lightwave for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and name it um, Window Box. Okay, so it's inside my object folder. 
for this semester alongside all of the others for the reboot character and that sort of thing. So I'm set to go. Um, I've create, created my surface mass, surface um, images and masks. I've created my box and now I'm going to make it look so that the box looks like it's made out of wood. I'm going to project image of the, the window on it and I'm going to create bump maps for both the um, the frame and I'm going to create one also for the, um, the window panes. So we'll see if I can't get this done today. So I'm going to move this down here and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is synchronized with layout and I'm going to send it over to layout. And there we have it. So now the first thing to do is to say I have this in the current camera view and that's fine. So I need to make sure that I have the, um, the camera selected. I need to enlarge this a little bit so I don't confuse this with the um, modeler underneath. There we go. So let's go ahead and select the camera and let's move the camera over a little bit and let's view this from sort of a three quarter view like so. So we can see this from the side a little bit. And let's move it up a little bit, camera up a little bit. And now I'm going to hit Y for rotate and we're gonna look at it like so. Okay. Probably should move the camera up even a little bit more. So let's key for move because I wanna see the top of that just a little bit. There we go. Okie doke. So now we're ready to create our projection maps. And the important thing to remember is that um, the maps themselves by default tile at one meter. So it isn't by coincidence that I created a one meter cube, so I don't need to worry about scale. But that's something that you do need to pay attention to later on when you start to use projection maps onto your, your image. Um, so what I need to do now is one at a time start to apply my images. So why do I need to bring up the surface editor? And you should see that I already have all of my surfaces created here. I have one for the ball. I have one for the box and I have one for the window. So I'm going to, instead of using principled VSDF, as I said, I'm going to use old school for these. I'm going to use standard. And to use standard, let's start with a box and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply a texture map. Now I need to know how this is going to be projected. And I want all the, the five remaining sides to be projected the same way. So it's going to be an image map. So I need to, um, the mode will be, um, blending mode will be normal. And I'm not going to use planar. I'm going to use something called um, cubic because I want <clears throat> the image that I'm projecting to be projected the same on each side. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now I need to find my image. Now, if you want any of these images, I have made them available for you. Um, <clears throat> but I need to go in and let's you know what, I need to download my image. So let me show you where I put them for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna download it. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna look at our selected common drive here. And if I look at Art 195, here is classic content. And there's lots of images that are available for you. So here's some, you know, a whole bunch of images. So there should be one for wood in here. So if I look in here, um, whether wood, there's a folder for wood. And this is the one that I want here, this JPEG one right here. So I'm going to download this. And I probably have to download them all. That's the way I probably work this whole thing. So I'm going to download this. Okay, 
and I'm going to put it in, let's go to desktop, and let's find my folder for content 2020 and put it in images and I'm going to save it as an image of wood. Okay, so you have all of you have access to all of these images as well. Okay. So now I can come back in here. And let's go to desktop. And let's look inside my images. And let's find the image of wood. So there's my image and let's project it. And there it is. If we look at this, let's look at this from, instead of camera view, let's look at it from perspective for the moment. And I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. And you can see, you know, on all the sides, I have projected wood. Now, the reason we can't see the back or the side is because they are in shadow. So let's make sure that this is correct. I have cubic here and that's supposed to be visible. So when I change the lighting of this, if it doesn't show up, then I need to make sure that um, works. So instead of, um, I don't want this to tile, I'm going to reset and reset. And I'm going to use automatic sizing like so. And notice it doesn't change because as I said, everything by default is set to a one meter setting. So the next thing that I want to do, and I guess I can leave it in perspective for a little bit instead of camera view, is that um, let's go ahead and do the window and let's see what we have for that. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to switch from um, principal BSDF and I'm going to go to standard. And again, I want to project an image onto here. So there's T for texture. And by default, it projects it along the z-axis, and that's where I want it. Um, let's try some others to see what happens, to show you what it looks like when it, does, it's, it projected along the wrong axis. Um, it's going to be a planar projection because it is a flat plane. If it were cylindrical, I would want that. If it were spherical, I might want that. We'll see. I don't want it to repeat. But just for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select and I'm going to say load image. And I'm going to go back in here and I should find, not the mask, I want my window. Where's my JPEG window? So let's go ahead and open that. And there it is. Okay. And again, I don't want it to repeat, so I'm going to reset. And it's important that I use all of these settings. Okay, and automatic setting so that it is one meter by one meter. So the first thing first, let's get rid of that background, the white. I don't want that in there. Because I'm also going to project an image of the wood in there as well. I want the wood to replace the white. So um, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a layer to this. So I'm going to copy the existing layer for the size and placement of this. So I'm going to select copy, current layer, and then I'm going to paste. And I'm going to say, I don't want to replace, I want to add two layers. So now I just have a duplicate. And now what I want to do is I want to put the mask on here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll leave it planar, leave all the other settings alone. And I'm going to go ahead and load image. And let's use down here, I want the window mask, right? And right now, because it's set to normal under blending mode, it does just that. It just, it, it, it's on a layer that's above the other. So it just layers it on top and sort of replaces the bottom one. If I were to turn this off, it's there underneath. And now I think you can see the reason why it's very important to make sure that they are all layered, identical, replaced on top of one another in the same size and uniform so that these masks work perfectly. But now what I want to do is instead of normal, I want this to be alpha. Okay. And you can see that I have it inverted, that I want to do just the opposite. Okay, so let's select that. And now I have the window pane showing and I have that background image. 
So let's go ahead and underneath all of this, let's go ahead and apply this again. So um, on top of this, I'm going to go ahead and let's try this. I might goof up here, but let, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, again, copy this layer, copy current layer, and I'm going to paste and I'm going to not replace, but add to layer. And now I'm going to use that image that I already used from before. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I want it planar and I'm going to use the image of wood. Okay, so that's there and I don't want the image of wood to be alpha. I want it to be normal. Okay, now I don't want that to be inverted. I want it to be brown, but now I need to bring all these others back up. So why don't I take the wood one and drop it down to the bottom. And now you can see that the wood layer is visible uh, underneath the image of the window um, shape that I created. And I have the window itself, that image. And then in order to mask that background, I used the, um, the mask that I created for the overall shape. So now let's um, jump into another one. Let's go ahead and make the window panes transparent. Okay, so now what we can do is um, I can come over here and we can look down here to transparency. And so what I want to do is I want to take, let's go ahead and take the mask layer that I created here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy it again, current layer. And the reason I'm copying it is because I have, again, the size of the, the mask and I have its position and everything else identical with the other ones so that they're all, again, perfectly aligned with one another. And so right here under transparent map, I'm going to go ahead and click T for transparent. And I'm going to go ahead and over here, there's my transparent texture here. Make sure there that window is selected. I don't want to affect the rest of that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy and I want, don't want to copy, I want to paste. And I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to replace all layers. Okay. And because this is set to normal, uh, let's see what I have here. Whoops, wrong, no, that's what I was afraid of. I accidentally select the wrong thing. Whoops, oh no, 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 what failed, what quit. And I haven't saved a thing. Let's go back here. You know what? Layout just quit on me. Damn. My apologies. So I'm going to pause this recording. I'm going to open it back up. And um, because I didn't save any of the layout, I'm going to have to do this again. So let's go back here. Let's pause. the. Okay. So my apologies. It uh, crashed on me. So now I got to move things and save it again, but now I save the, the layout so that every time I make a change to all of this, I can do that. So let's make sure um, here I have layout resized here, nice and big. And I'm going to select the camera and I'm going to move the camera up a little bit so I can see the top. Now let's move it over a little bit and now let's rotate the camera so I can see it like so and I'm going to save it yep I'm going to overwrite all the files so let's try this again let's bring up the surface editor there we go <clears throat> Let's go ahead and with a box selected, uh, I'm going to switch from VSDF to um, standard. I'm going to click here under texture editor. And I said that I wanted to use this cubic. So I want the uh, blending mode to be normal. I don't want to use planar. I want to use cubic. And let's see if I'm going to go ahead and load the image. 
And I need to come back in here and I should have my image of wood. There we go. There we go. So I'll make sure that this is not repeat, reset, reset, and automatic sizing. And again, I'm going to save and overwrite. Every time I make a change now, I'm just going to save so that if I, if it crashes again, then I have, I can go back to it. So let's go ahead now and let's do the window once again. I'll select the window and instead of um, PSDF, I'm going to use standard. And again, under T for texture, um, I'll use front projection. So uh, planar, um, the image that I want to use is the image of the window. So let's go ahead and load the window. So here's my window JPEG. There we go. So let's go ahead and reset, reset, and make sure that it is automatically sized. And we're in good shape. So now I need to cut away the outside. So I'm going to take this layer that I've already created and already sized and everything, and I'm going to copy it. So current layer, and I'm going to paste, and I don't want to replace, I want to add two layers. And now I just need the silhouette of the image. So I'm going to go um, to load image. And I'm going to select the silhouette. Um, window frame mask, where did it go? Window, window. I just named it window mask. That was it. There we go. So now what I need to do is switch from normal to alpha. Okay, and that cuts it away and I need to invert it so that the window is revealed. So that's set. Now I can go ahead and I can copy again the current layer and paste and add to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the image of the um, <coughs> For this one, I'm going to go ahead and use the image of the wood. Okay, and I don't want alpha. I want it to be normal so that that is revealed. And I don't want to be inverted so that it looks like so. But I want the image of the wood to be at the bottom. Now you can see that that is revealed. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Ta-da! So we're doing good so far. Now I said I wanted to create a transparent map for the window panes. So let's give that a try. So under transparency, I'm going to hit T for transparent. Okay. And I'm just going to use the last layer that was copied, but I'm going to use an image of um, the window panes to cut it away. So I'm going to go ahead and paste. And I want to replace current layer. Okay. And that should be cutting away any moment now. Oh, that's set to alpha. That's why I want that to be set to normal. There we go. Because it's on its own alpha layer. And what I want this to be now is not the image of the window, the, the window, but the window panes. So I'm going to switch to um, here, I'm going to load my image. Okay, let's find the mask for window panes. Um, and here it is. There we go. So I've got that there. It should be set to normal. And uh, we want it inverted or not. And you know what? For what some reason here, Oh, transparency is set to, let's, there we go. Let's set it to 100%. And now let's go back. And let's see, that does cut away the whole side, but I want to make sure that just the window panes are affected. So I should be able to go back here and turn this to zero. And now let's go ahead under my layer mask here, planar, JPEG, 
layer opacity. Yeah, I want that to be 100%. So why aren't you cutting? Oh, I know why. Duh. You have to remember, and see, I have forgotten that, um, you know, I'm not paying attention as I'm trying to demonstrate to you that it's set the textured shaded solid at the moment. The only way I can see transparency is switch to VPR. And there you go. You can see the ball inside my box. You can see the window panes. So what I need to do is invert this layer. Ta-da. So now I have inside of the box, it's visible. You can see um, all the sides of the box that are in wood now. Um, I can change the opacity of this so that it's not exactly 100%, but maybe I want to see a little bit of that color. So let's make it maybe, you know, 80, 85% transparent. Okay. And again, all I did is I started with a simple cube and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, if I want the box itself, this one, if I want to see wood on the inside, I could go back to the box and remember I can use double sided. Now it looks awfully dark in there because instead of a light box, I have wood, but you can still see through and you can see the ball inside that. So a couple more things that maybe I can add today. Let's see if I have time for that today. I might. Let's try to work with a frame and then and, and get and add a bump map to that. And then on Wednesday, what I'll do is I'll um, add a reflection map to the panes so that it reflects um, something because glass generally reflects. And that we also um, add a bump map to the window panes because typically glass, because it is a super cooled liquid, it isn't a solid. Oftentimes, if you've ever um, looked at old glass, it looks like it's kind of running or dripping. So we can add, or if you, even if you look at a new big sheet of glass, it looks a little bit ripply. Well, we can add um, a bump map to it so that it adds a little bit of a ripple to it. Um, we can exaggerate it, of course, but typically glass is not perfect. It has a slight little wave to it, so we can add that. So for today, let's go ahead and let's add a bump map so that our window frame doesn't look like it's directly on the, the, you know, painted on, but actually has depth. And there's a variety of ways that this can be done, but I'm just going to use a bump map for right now. So again, with the window selected, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit key for bump. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use just what we had done before. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy, I've already copied, so I'm going to go ahead and paste. I'm going to replace this existing layer. Okay, now you're not going to notice much because I have that image of the whole background and I need to change the amplitude of it so that that really is significant. So I want it remain planar, but I only want the window frame and the mullions. So I'm going to go ahead and load the image for that. So here's the window frame mask. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that. And now I need to change the amplitude of this and see, you know, which direction we want this to go. So I'm going to change this to maybe five and see what happens here. And see if we can't get um, it working here. So let's turn this off and see if we can't, what's being affected. I probably want that to remain inverted. Okay. Um, and I've got the window mullions. So let me change this to 200 and see if that doesn't affect anything. No, let's go back to 100. Let's change the amplitude to 10 and see if we can't see anything today.
and I'm not seeing at the moment anything at the moment. Let's change the mipmap strength from one. Uh, this is just a guess to maybe three. And let's see, let me go to, because um, I won't see, if I switch back to, um, from final render to, um, from VPR rather, to texture shaded solid, see, I don't see any of those things. So I need to leave it on VPR. So I'm going to rotate my camera a little bit more to hopefully see some bumpiness in the window frame. And if I don't, then I'll, I will work on it um, today and get it working for you on um, uh, Wednesday. And we'll do the same for the glass. Okay. So I'm going to rotate. I can rotate the cube, I suppose. So why don't we do that instead? So we have objects. We got window box and I'm going to hit Y for rotate. So let's go back and shade it. And let's rotate just a little bit. Come on. I don't want the pitch to be changed at all. I want Let's change the heading a little bit. I have the wrong layer selected. That's why. There we go. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. So let's let's switch back to VPR and see what I can see here. Let's go ahead and now take the camera, maybe. Let's switch the camera. Let's hit key for move and let's move it closer. And see if we can get that. It might be inset. <clears throat> so I'm going to look at background real quick. Let's go back to backdrop. And Let's turn off the backdrop. Let's go ahead and look at lights and see how we can affect lights a little bit. And I could probably get one on Wednesday add some more lights. So I'm going to go ahead and under lights, let's look at light properties. And I'm going to crank this up a little bit. That's a little bit brighter. There we go. Okay, let's bring up the surface editor again. And I'm going to have to add a, um, a light source for the shadow side too. That's just too dark. You know, add a fill light here. So let's look in here. Let's change the bump height here maybe to 200%. See if that doesn't affect it. How about 300%? Let's go back in here. And let's see. Oh, it's changed. It's to set to alpha. And it's not supposed to be. It should be normal. There we go. And it's going the wrong direction. So that's where I need to invert that. And now it should be sticking out. And it is just a little bit. You can see a little bit of a shadow out here. No, it is in set, so I do need to invert it. There we go. So we have 10. Let's change the map strength to 5. Maybe that will help a little bit. And let's change the texture amplitude. Let's crank that way up to 15 and see if that doesn't help us at all. And it's very subtle, but it is 
popping out a little bit. And we see a little subtle shadow here. I'm going to change that to 500 percent. Whoops. Well, that's, that's the current light. And I didn't want to change that. Let's go back to the camera again. Okay. And let me come back in here. There we go. 500. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Come on. I don't want to change the current light. I want to change. There we go. There we go. Let's click in here. It keeps changing on me. The current light. <clears throat> so we are close, but not quite there. So I said, what I want to do is I want to add ripples to the glass. I want to add reflection to the glass. And that's where we'll, um, we'll add a, um, a fill light to the side here. Actually, I could do that now. We do have a little bit of time, a little, just a few minutes here. So I'm going to close some of these. And let's look at top view. I could put a light inside the box too if I wanted to. So let's look at the top view and let's look at it in wireframe. Just so I can see what's going on here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a light. And I'm going to add a, let's just add a point light for the heck of it. And let's move it out over here. Okay. And we might have to move it up. So let's look at it from side view. No, it looks okay. So let's try back camera view. And let's look at it in VPR. Oh, wow. See, much too bright. And that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and hit camera properties. Or light properties, I should say. And I'm going to change the light intensity to our point light to maybe one. Yeah. And again, that's probably not the right kind of light, but you get the idea. That I'm adding a fill light to this so that things are working better. You can begin to see the bump map a little bit better for the window frame. And again, all I did is I started with a simple box with a ball inside. And that's it. And it's looking, you know, much more um, robust, uh, for lack of a better word. It's looking much, you know, fairly realistic, like a, you know, a box made of wood with a window and panes cut out of it. And it's just starting with simple geometry, nothing more than adding maps to it. So that's where I'll leave off today. And I'll probably, um, I'll finish this up on Wednesday. And then um, also on Wednesday, we'll, um, I'll, I'll do a demonstration on lighting. And we can, um, instead of maybe using a point light here, I could probably switch to, um, let's do that. Let's switch from point light to make that maybe an area light. Well, yeah, see, I got to change the, I could, you know, change its properties and that sort of thing. I could, you know, uh, use a spotlight. Yeah, see, I got to change the direction of it. So for right now, I'm going to stay with point light. Um, no, I didn't want that. Yeah, I do want point light. There we go. Okay, so I haven't saved in a little bit, so I'm going to make sure that I save all of this. There we go. So that we have um, something to work on on Wednesday and I don't have to start all over again even if it crashes. 
Okay. Um, do are there any questions from any of you before we um, end our class today? Um, let's bring up participants. Let's bring up um, Q and A. No questions. How about um, chat? Um, yeah, this is related, uh, Veronica, this is related to the toy project. That's why I'm suggesting to you <clears throat> that you pick a very simple, simple toy. Um, good question. Um, because I want you to do basically what I've done here, then it will take a bit of work to get used to it, of working with um, this, <clears throat> with these masks and that sort of thing. But that's what I'm saying. A very simple, for example, one of the a nice one would be a little <clears throat> Lego, you know, uh, guy, or it could be a little wooden train with maybe a little um, uh, kind of rope, you know, that, to pull it, but all made entirely of wood. So how would you make it look like wood? You would use um, Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry, Delvin. It said Veronica, so I was thinking it was somebody else. That's okay. I, uh, well, say hello to your mother. <laughs> um, my apologies. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, this is very pertinent to the toy assignment because that's what I want you to pick a very simple toy that um, it could be made of plastic or wood um, or plastic and wood, things like that. Maybe it has a logo on it that, um, or a decal or things like that. Um, probably one of the nicest, um, ones that I had here and that I had in a while let me show you a good, a really, I mean, there's lots of good examples on my website. But um, let's go to Kirk's classes real quick. And let's jump in here. Now this one, when will a toy assignment be due? Probably midterm or a little bit after, maybe the ninth or 10th week. And then the remainder of the semester will be working on your final assignment. But this, this one here, you know, this was done as a toy assignment. Um, this one was done as a final assignment. This is kind of a combination and these are kind of sophisticated because they involve organic modeling. This is the one that I was thinking of that it uses all the principles that we have covered so far. Okay. And you can see where they've added bump maps, where they've added um, projection maps, where they've um, used some of the basic Boolean features that we've um, used so far. So this is really a super, super example of doing something that is a that it's, it's basically a box a series of little boxes um, but through the use of more sophisticated surfacing has created something that looks pretty believable and pretty real so this is for for the toy probably one of the best examples but there are others that are good too you know i mean it depends on how you feel you know um come on these are all final assignments. Chess pieces, they're good. You know, you can make the chess look like it's, you know, a very polished and highly reflective um, paint, or it could be made out of wood, or maybe it's made out of marble or glass or any number of things. Now, she turned this into her final project. She started by building a single 
I think it was one or two chess pieces for her toy assignment and then for her final assignment because you have almost a half a semester to work on this, built all the rest of the chess pieces and then, um, you know, put it on a chess board and then added some atmosphere to it, you know, some volumetric lighting and that sort of thing to really turn this into something quite spectacular. So does that give you guys some ideas? I hope. So again, this is like the seventh week. So we'll have at least um, three, four more weeks to do to work on this. Since you just finished the reboot character. Okay. Does that answer everybody's questions? Any more questions? And Delvin, let me make sure that I get you because I haven't taken roll for everybody yet. Make sure that you're here. Okay, and I apologize. Okay, so sorry for the crash, um, but that happens. Um, and then we're good for today. So you guys are welcome to leave. I will, um, stop recording and I will um, go ahead and post this very soon. Okay. So bye-bye for today. Have a good afternoon. I'll see everybody Wednesday. So we'll finish up this demonstration and I'm also going to talk about lighting because that will be another important component to your um, toy assignment. Lighting and surfaces can really bring a very simple model to life and make it look very real and pretty spectacular. Okay. Okie doke. So I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to say goodbye for today and I'll let you guys log off.